Welcome back to the Confused Newscast for the 26th of December to the 1st of January. This is a New Year's special episode that we're going to be taking a little look back at the year's highlights in gaming. Earlier on in the year we can see amazing games such as the expansion to the World of Warcraft universe, Cataclysm, which I know technically isn't in 2011 and was at the tail end of 2010, but meh, we'll just look over that. People waited for this game with bated breath, um, and when it came out originally, right at the start, it was um, it was well received, um, but as the time went on they patched it and it became a little bit stale and people started to go off it, and obviously recently we've seen uh, World of Warcraft slump in subscribers, they lost at least a million in August, um, that's that's been generally put down to um, to bad content and just the content becoming stale because nobody um, nobody seems to enjoy the same content over and over and over again. And um, I was speaking with Hyperion about this, and uh, as he said, all these kind of games have a lifetime, and their lifetime, is MMO lifetime, generally, generally speaking, from what we've seen, is, is about five to six years, and uh, World of Warcraft has exceeded that. And to be honest, with Cataclysm, they they ended up changing their their formula that they knew they knew pulled in subscribers because up to up to the start of Cataclysm, they were gaining subscribers, and with uh, the expansion before that, Wrath of the Lich King, they um, they got a formula that was working, that was drawing in players and hooking them pretty much. Um, but they changed, I think they changed the recipe just a little too much with Cataclysm, and they ended up um, they ended up scaring a lot of people away. So with their new new expansion that has been announced for next year, the um, Miss of the Pandaria, they might try and change things back to uh, how we saw it in Lich King, as this is, was proved to bring in the subscribers and boost their numbers. Um, another great, great release of this year was Gears of War 3, which um, I am sad to say I didn't get to play pretty much any of, but I saw a couple of uh, a couple of people playing it. it. Looked like a good game. The uh, the reviews were great. The the just. Just the whole look and the whole advertising campaign that obviously we're all subjected to, I absolutely loved, and um, it looked graphically pleasing. And when I uh, when I had a little go at it with friends, it was um, it was exceedingly, it was, it was beautiful to handle. It, it was it was just a nice game. It felt well built. Um, another great blockbuster of this year was Battlefield Three, of course, which was eagerly awaited by millions upon millions of people. Um, obviously, it had a massive open beta right before it. Which we we have some footage from, but we decided not to launch the channel at that point. Um, but the beta the beta was really buggy, but a really clever way for the um, for for Dice um, to to debug their game and stress test the servers. Um, but on release, I um, I played I played for a little bit and found the maps were were pretty poor. And the just the general HUD, the user interface was really it, it wasn't it wasn't shiny, it wasn't precise, it didn't feel like you were in control of the character. Um therefore I I just kind of went off the game. It didn't it didn't really appeal to me. Um But there are some new uh there is some new DLC that's being offered by DICE. The the map pack, uh Back to Karzan, which was or well, includes the maps from Battlefield Bad Company two which um, could go some way to remedying the situation for, well, for me, anyway. Um, and obviously the, the blockbuster that came after that was Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, which was an eagerly awaited, but surrounded with a controversy thanks to the uh, goings-on with Infinity Ward. And obviously we didn't know how good um, Sledgehammer Studios was actually going to be. Uh, turned out that they, they were pretty good. Um, the game is fine. It's not piece of art such as Modern Warfare was the original one. Um, it's reasonably smooth it had a reasonably smooth launch on PS3 and I can't speak for PC as I didn't pick up the game until after its launch. Um, obviously there's a lot there was a lot of rival between Battlefield 3 and Modern War Modern Warfare 3. because um, Battlefield decided to launch a month before Modern Warfare to try and beat them to the uh, to the marketplace and try and build up a little bit of a lead. Um, as then Modern Warfare 3 was then released in November. But despite this, um, Modern Warfare 3 ended up outselling Battlefield in the first week, uh, bringing in, which was the, which has actually set a couple of records to do with um, how much money it brought in, and it was one of the first games to beat 
the uh, like a an equivalent uh, film blockbuster, which would have brought in X amount of money, and the game brought in actually more in the first week. Um, obviously, there was an open beta for Battlefield Three, as they were trying to entice people in, which is a great publicity stunt, and it was an amazing way to stress test the servers and get them ready so there was no bugs and huge server downtimes on launch, which could have been an issue in Modern Warfare Three because they obviously didn't get any open beta and stress testing done in uh, in public. Um, Obviously, you have the slightly later on in the year. We go for a little bit of Elder Scrolls Skyrim, which was which was again eagerly awaited by a lot of people. Um, which again, I've played very little of, um, and from what I've seen of it, it looks absolutely amazing. Um, it looks like it's a lot better than than Oblivion, which was the Elder Scrolls game which I played a lot of. Um, it seems like there's a lot more diversity to the game, and it might bring me back to the Elder Scrolls series, which means we could get a video of it uh, on the channel soon. And then of course we have Assassin's Creed Revelations, which is another great addition to the series of Assassin's Creeds, which I'm a massive fan of, um, because they, they're just extremely immersive on the PC and on the console. Either way you play, you're in there with, you know, with the character, you're doing each of the quests, you're slashing that guy's neck and t ramming that massive two-handed hammer through that guy's face, um, which is a lot of fun, and got to got to admit, it's extremely enjoyable. Um, that's about it for the great blockbusters that have that I've clocked this year, and uh, of course there are many other unsung great games still left out there. Um, for example, the countless quality games that are on offer on the Steam sale at the moment. Um, feel feel free to leave a comment below this video. Um, with unsung games that you think are worthy of being in our next big countdown. Uh, time to wrap things up. Have a great new year, folks, and here's the 2012. Farewell.